Hey folks, this is Red Falcon, and this is episode 4 of my Let's Play Evocron Mercenary. In our last episode, um, I played Janitor and cleaned a solar array. That was kind of boring. And I died. <laughs> An awful death. But um, we got that job done, and we're at the next mission point. And uh, I went ahead and docked with uh, Station 5. And first thing we're going to do is, if I remember correctly, this... Okay, they want us to mine 25 units of material and deliver it to the station. Now, I've done this before, and when you mine this asteroid, you get more than one um, type of unit. And if you noticed before, our cargo bay only has one slot, so we're only going to be able to collect one of those types of units. So asking himself, well, Falcon, how do we fix that? Well, I'll show you. First thing you want to do is you want to click this little, well, okay, well, the very first thing you should do after you make sure that your engines are off and you're not burning fuel is to refuel your ship. So let's fill the tank. Okay, so we're fueled up. We want to enter the station. Now, entering the station does a couple things for us. If we were in hostile space and we docked with the station, our ship is still vulnerable unless we get a, um, a license. And you can purchase a license for like about like a million and a half credits. And that's um, located right here. Um, and what that does is it gives you like a 25% discount and a 25% um, selling bonus. Um, it also, if I remember correctly from my reading, it protects you from enemy fire. Now when you dock, first of all, if you dock in hostile space, you're probably going to have to pay a docking fee. So you want to pay that first. So, um, but once you're inside the station, um, you have access to the hangar and the shipyard. And I'm just going to show you the hangar really quickly. Um, basically, what you can do is you can take stuff from your ship and you can store it in um, your um, cargo base. So, like, let's say, oh, I don't know, I want to put my tractor beam here for some reason. There it is right there. And... It's always on the station, so you can actually um, you can actually kind of use it as a a storage facility for um, where items. Like if you were a trader, um, you could keep supplies in a station. But I don't really do anything with this because I'm not much of a trader. I'm a combat pilot, <laughs> so uh, yeah, combat pilot that FTLs into a solar panel. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't say I was a good combat pilot. Anyway, that's the hangar. But what we're interested in is the shipyard. Now, whoa. There's a lot of things on the screen. Let's break this down, all right? First of all, let me turn this spinny thing off because I don't like the thing spinning around. Um, if you look in the very center here, this is your ship, all right? This is a three-dimensional rendering of your ship, what it looks like right now. On this side, this is the stats for your current ship. As you can see, we have a trade-in value of uh, 425 um, thousand credits um, shows you the frame the type of engine you're using this is your maximum speed the shield level you're using your cargo bay level your fuel tank capacity the level of your wing system how many crew it complements um, the equipment slots the countermeasures the number of countermeasures I should say the maximum number and of course the hard points hard points are um, for missiles so um, when it says two hard points that means we can equip two missiles. Now over here is my total cash and how much the upgrades are going to cost me or how much money I'm going to get back. This is um, this looks identical to this side because I haven't changed anything but this is um, where um, the changes are for your ship. I'll get that into a little bit. And um, the hangar, you can go to the hangar, you can actually like um, you know um, switch out ships that you want to change. Um, templates. What you can do is, um, actually, these are from my other character. Um, like, if you get a ship template that you really like, you can go here and you can save it and you can load it later. And this is frame configuration. Now, this only works for civilian ships. Now, I don't know. If you can remember back to episode 00 and 1, I asked you not to choose combat pilot, and the reason I had told you not to choose combat pilot is because, um, I haven't tried this myself, but from what I've read, you get a military fighter. Military fighters can't really be upgraded. They're 
pretty standard. And you also don't get access to this guild quest line. So that's why I told you to ignore the combat pilot for now. So there was a method to my madness. But um, if you go here to con frame configure, you can actually um, assign points to um, different things. Like, for example, I, I don't need another crew member. So I'm going to move that to zero crew. Um, now that's not including me. I'm the pilot. So I can actually take that and put it towards something else. Like, let's say I wanted, um, oh, I don't know, um, extra countermeasures. So now I have 50 countermeasures instead of just that. Or I wanted an extra equipment slot. You know. Um, but for right now, let's see, that's three, that's four. I can't think of any, a fourth one I would need, so I'm just going to put in extra countermeasures. Okay, and if you notice, um, it changes to two. Um, you know, hard points, I was wrong about hard points. I, I'm so sorry, I made a mistake. Secondary weapon hard points. Um, these are for um, equipping your, um, your ship. Actually, I'm sorry, they're the same thing, because if we change it to one... Okay, yeah, so that's number... Of, okay, so... Never mind, I told you the wrong... I told you the right thing, so... Just don't listen to me. Don't don't listen to that. Okay. Now, okay, now you can listen to me. I got my thoughts together. Okay, so what we want to do is we just want to... We don't need that extra pilot slot, so we're just going to put an extra equipment slot, so we're fine. We don't need a crew right now. Crew's another story. I'll, I'll get into another episode, so... Um, over here are your frames. Now, um, actually, if you look right here, um, assembly left, um, each frame has a certain number of assembly. And assembly, you can think of assembly as your building limit. Like, you can only put so much on one frame. Like, for example, um, each piece of equipment that you attach to a ship has um, an assembly cost. And your total components can't exceed your frames maximum assembly it's pretty simple i'll show you what i mean but like for example this is a talon frame this is the one we're using right now um the pulsar frame if we were to equip that you'll notice it has slightly more um assembly it also costs a lot more like this is actually going to cost me um 425 thousand credits and I don't have that kind of money so we're just gonna stick with the basic frame right now and I already had this thing configured the way I wanted so okay okay we're good okay so over here oh actually let's let's focus down here this gives you your frame information so the capacity um, okay armors obviously how much armor it has agility agility assembly is how much assembly it has capacity I believe that's how many um yeah design capacity that's how many of these little um um squares you get that's all that means so but we're too poor to afford a new frame so we're just going to ignore that over here we've got um there's five categories there's engines shields cargo bays fuel tanks and wing systems um and of course, they're organized from the cheapest at the top to the most expensive. Now, if you'll notice, the most expensive ones tend to have more assembly. Well, they do have more assembly, but they also give you better stats. So the idea is um, the, lar the larger frame you have, the more options you have, and it kind of forces you to specialize. So for our purposes... Um, we want a cargo bay that can do, I'm going to say, let's do one that has four 25 units. And if you want to equip something, you just drag it onto your ship. Easy as that. Now, if you notice, our assembly left went down. It was like 100 and something. Now it's like 75. So we got cargo bays. We're good. Fuel tank. You know, I don't like having a small fuel tank. So we're going to go and go with a class 2 fuel tank that doubles our capacity to 800. And um, this cargo bay will give us four total slots. So we've got a little assembly left. Um, I vote we upgrade the engines a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Um, 
since we're not fighting anything yet. And you'll notice that these level 3 engines increase our maximum speed to 625. Okay, and we've got we've got 25 assembly left? Okay, um, let's go ahead and upgrade our shields while we're at it. Um, can I fit a class 3 on there? No, I can't fit a class 3, so I have to put a class 2 on there. Okay. And that's it. Um, you can click this button here to change your color. I'm personally a fan of the... Um, this this color, this kind of like silver metallic color. Um, my other one's kind of a red color. Oh, and this highlight button shows you um, what component you're currently editing. And you can customize your ship's look by uh, moving these sliders around. And you click the center button and it'll, it'll center it. Which that looks kind of stupid. And over here you can you can scale it. So let's Oh, those are some really big engines. All right, let's up that position a little. Oops, that's way off. Actually, you know what this kind of reminds me of? It almost reminds me of the uh, gummy ship construction in Kingdom Hearts. Yep, I just referenced Kingdom Hearts. What of it? Okay. All right, and shields, I don't really care too much about that. Cargo bay, ah, that's whatever. Fuel tank, that's right there in the center of the ship. Wings, eh, let's, I don't know, let's load those wings a little bit. Oh, I don't want them up like that. Yeah, and then we'll, maybe we'll, um, we'll s no, that looks kind of stupid. There we go, that looks a little better. And then we'll extend those out a little bit. And I kind of wish um, they had an effect on, um, like, your atmospheric stats, but really it's just cosmetic. It doesn't really do anything. Okay, so when you're done with that, um, click the um, Trade and Build. And we have a shiny new ship, sort of, with an upgraded cargo bay. And what we're going to do, excuse me, is we're going to accept the quest the contract and then we're gonna go to the ship well no, we're not gonna go to the shipyard we're going to click on the launch ship button here hit Talking f3 disengaged. okay all right and that was kind of a quick and dirty explanation now um you'll want to have your HUD mode set to um I think this is called HUD mode zero or something because um, like let me show you without it you don't get the asteroid um, distances and I can't remember how close you have to be to an asteroid so just alt B okay, we we'll probably need to get a little bit closer there we go alright just kill it alright every time you hear that clunk clunk sound that means um, we're getting stuff in our cargo bay. So right now we're pulling in diamonds, which fetch a pretty good price if you can find um, a sell a buyer. Okay, now we're pulling in metal, and yeah, this is pretty much how mining works. You you sit here and you wait for um, stuff to come in. So in the interest of um, Keeping this tutorial relatively short and getting in as much information as we can, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here, and then um, I'll resume when I have the uh, 25 metal. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, and that was only about a little less than five minutes. So let's pull back from this asteroid a little bit. Here. All right, disengage that. We have our 25 metal required for the. Um, mission okay and I chose that asteroid because it was really close and you get a lot of diamond from it so if you can find the right buyers you can make a nice chunk of change and I guess mining's not all that bad um, and there we go and we've been given a mission to destroy some asteroids 
and a shipping lane. Travel back to the Efricron station near Sapphire. Okay, well, that's basically where we start um, started from. Now, I don't know an easy way to do this, so I guess just, like, note the price of items. And, um, you know, try to find the best deal. That's that's one thing that um, X, the X series of games really did well, was they had the, uh, the best buy and the best sell um, plugins for your ship. But um, I'm sure there's, like, information on line about making good trade lines. I guess that's like half the fun, I guess, is trying to find good trade lines. I don't, I've never been much of a trader personally, so, or a miner. <clears throat> but anyway, that's how you do it. So let's, um, let's go ahead and refuel our ship, fill the tank. And as you can see, we now have, um, we now have higher fuel capacity. And if you look down here at our countermeasures, we can now carry 50 countermeasures. Really cool stuff, if you ask me. Alright. And let's just blast out of here. Alright. Actually. Yeah, those engines... Those new engines accelerate pretty fast, too. Okay. Alright. Wrong button. Okay. So... That's the Evercron station right there. Evocron, I'm sorry. I know I'm probably mispronouncing that. And I do apologize. Alright. Engage. Oh. Left the parking brake on. Actually, I need to engage the autopilot. I'm... Still used to my other ship, because my other ship could have made that jump. It's got like a class five Vulcan drive, I think, something like that. This isn't too bad though. There's Sapphire right ahead of us. Is that? I think that's Sapphire. Oh, I'm about to jump. Yep. Alrighty then. Disengaging autopilot. Is that station at? Ah, there she is. Alrighty then, let's get this girl lined up and let's dock with that station. Alright. And I've been thinking about investing in a joystick, but I don't know. I'd have to play an awful lot of these games to warrant the cost and the extra desk space. My desk gets cramped enough as it is. I don't think a joystick would would help. But I don't know. I'm, I'm actually getting pretty good with using a mouse with these games. I don't know. What do you guys think in the comments? You joystick people, or do you prefer using a mouse? I know um, in the 90s and when uh, space combat simulators were huge. Everyone had a joystick. I remember my dad had a joystick. Of course, he actually played flight simulators, so he had a reason for having it. But still, you know, everyone had a joystick. Now it's like, you know, no one's ever used one. Or no one really uses them anymore. It's becoming become a thing of the past, really. But I guess that's uh, part of the evolution of games, I suppose. We're starting to see, um, you know, stuff like the Kinect um, remove um, even the controller, like something that we all just associate with games, They're just removing it from, you know, the gaming experience. Now, I'm not endorsing Kinect by any stretch of the imagination. It's far from perfect technology, but it's just fascinating. That's kind of the the route we're going. Yeah, one of my roommates, um, her um, nephew, I was playing um, PS2 game with him, and he actually didn't know that, like, controllers plugged in. Made me feel old. 
Like, he was born two years after the PlayStation 2 was released. Can you even believe... I don't know. I'm still young enough that the whole getting old thing's weird. I don't know. Maybe you never grow out of it. I don't know. But anyway, so we have a job here to clear some asteroids, so we're going to accept it. And we don't need any special equipment for this. We just need our guns. So I'm going to blast out of here. Sort of. My new engines. All right. And I believe I should have coordinates locked in. Yep, I got coordinates. Now this is what I like to do. I like to fly in on um, like just inertial power and I like to strafe these asteroids. I'll show you what I mean. It's so basically I just, you know, pick a spot and then I just sail through it and blow up asteroids. Now I think I have to be... How close do I have to be to these? I think I have to be like within 500 units. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that asteroid. Pew, 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 pew. Oh. Okay, do I have any others that are close? Nope. Oh, this guy's pretty close. a little juice. I have to destroy 20 of these. Alright, what else is kind of close? This guy's kind of close. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of maneuvering and then um, I'm maneuvering and then I'm just um, firing away at them. Let's see. Um, ah, there we go. So I'm really not using a lot of fuel this way. Alright, come on. Alright. How am I looking on time? Alright, let me get a little bit closer to this asteroid, and it's, this is another, um, a mission training you for combat. Now you're learning to, um, get close to targets and engage them, which I believe 500 is about the, um, targeting range for uh, most weapons in this game. But anyway, you guys get the point of all this. I think I'm going to cut the video right here. Um, thank you for watching. If um, my video was helpful at all or you enjoyed it and maybe you learned something, please click the like button and leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you for watching.